Welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, July 24th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013. Uh, I have a poll up here. I just posted up here. Um, it says here, do you think the mainstream media's anti-gun coverage prior to the signing of the UN Arm Trade Treaty is coincidental? So far, 100% uh, of the voters say no, it is not a coincidence, i.e. there is a definitely a political agenda going on here. Um, so, um, also if you'd like to help me out and donate, just even like five bucks or something, that would definitely help, especially at this time. I appreciate it. And first we'll talk about the economy and eugenics and maybe even some police state or martial law type stuff. So first up, 12 signs that Spain is shifting gears from recession to depression. That video that we just saw was from Spain. Kind of looks like Greece a little bit, doesn't it? So it says here, uh, at one point on Monday, the stock market fell to the lowest level in nearly 10 years. It goes on and it says that the unemployment level is up to an astounding 24%. The youth unemployment is 52%. Spain's industrial output declined for, a ninth, for the ninth month in a row in May. And lastly, uh, local governments all over Spain are flat broke and need to be bailed out by the national government. Next up is Greece. Greece now in the Great Depression, says the Prime Minister. It goes on and it says that um, some international lenders arrived in Athens to push for further cuts needed for the debt-laden country to qualify for further rescue payments. Now, those things going to actually rescue them? No, they're going to hurt them, actually, and avoid a chaotic default. So we keep seeing this term now, depression, that's now in the mainstream media to let the slaves know it's here. Oh, the recession, it's not gonna it's not gonna turn around. I was telling this people four years ago that we are in a permanent recession slash depression, but they say, okay, no we're not. Uh, how close are we to the new Great Depression? And it goes on and it says, this is an individual, Richard Duncan, who was interviewed on CNBC for his new depression, the new depression, his book. It says here, when we broke the link between money and gold, this removed all constraints on credit creation. The explosion of credit created the world we live in, but it now seems that the credit cannot expand any further because of the private sector is incapable of repaying that debt it has already. And if credit begins to contract, there is a very real danger that we will collapse into a new Great Depression, uh, followed by this story right here. So this is all money that was siphoned off um, from generations of people who slaved away. And um, now they don't have much disposable income. But uh, basically, it was, it was siphoned off by a select few of elites that owned all of these different uh, global lenders and corporations and stuff like that. And they have to be able to launder it. They have to be able to launder it. So they, you know, they do it into Swiss accounts and they put it into infrastructure and stuff like that and keep moving it around, a little shuffle. But it says here, a global super rich elite uh, had at least $21 trillion, probably way more than that, hidden in secret tax havens by the end of 2010. So this is what they're talking about. Oh, the IRS is going to crack down on tax havens, right? You think they're going to come after these bastards, these robbers? No, they're not. They're going to come after the guy that has a small business that is barely getting by, right, because he's getting hounded by the IRS. And um, just to keep his business open, he has to possibly put money offshore to avoid those taxes, right, so that he could actually hire people and create real jobs. Food price, uh, food price crisis feared as erratic weather wreaks havoc on crops. And it goes on and says, freak weather or weather modification in some of the world's vital food producing regions is ravaging crops and threatening another Another global food engineered crisis like the price shocks that unleashed the social and political unrest in 08 and 2010. This is exactly what the global elites want. They want to create an end times prophecy type scenario where they come in and swoop in with their, with their solution, right? Problem, right? They created the problem. They're manipulating people's reaction with all this media propaganda. And they'll come in with their solution, which is going to usually involve some kind of global system. Drought forcing ranchers to sell cattle, which means you can expect beef prices to go up. Uh, prices along with corn and soy and everything else along with your friendly gas prices so you can drive your shitty job. U.S. Uh, poverty rate projected to hit highest levels since the 1960s. So it says the ranks of America's poor are on track to climb levels unseen in nearly half a century. And um, it goes over racing the gains from the war on poverty. Okay, yeah, like the war on drugs and war on terror. So 
Uh, the war on terror means they bring a reign of terror on the uh, free people of America, the once free people. The war on poverty is to put you in poverty, and the war on drugs is so that the CIA and intelligence agencies and the government can uh, use drugs to f uh, fund all of their uh, proxy wars. Cash-strapped Argentine town pays employees by raffle. A raffle will determine which civil servants in a small Argentine town will receive their pay first. Due to insufficient funds, the mayor said, we will draw lots to decide the order of their paycheck. <laughs> J.C. Penney's to eliminate checkout clerks. So as all this wealth has been siphoned off, uh, whatever uh, mi real strong middle class we had uh, was able to go to Sears and Marshall Fields and J.C. Penney. Well, they don't, you know, Kohl's, and that's why you see Kohl's all the time with all these 30% off plus 15% off plus 80% off. It's like, how are they doing this, right? Well, um, the, the main thing is they don't make clothes here in America anymore. That's the biggest thing. So, uh, but yeah, they get rid of. They're going to get rid of what? The eliminate checkout clerks. So. I don't know how it's going to work because they're all about cracking down on theft, which is going to be increasing, which is already increasing during the great, quote, recession. That is now a depression because people are getting desperate. So because people don't have the money to shop there anymore and they're losing sales, now they're just going to start firing people and there's not going to be as many jabs. So man dives off Tower Bridge in Olympic taxi protests, dived off the London's historic Tower Bridge into the River Thames on Monday during a protest by taxi drivers over their exclusion from part of the Special Olympic Games road network into or in the capital. I love what the police said, too. It says here, this is absolutely a crazy thing to do. He could have easily killed himself. Well, it's his body. He can do whatever he want, right? No, you're a limited liability slave. You belong, you belong to the state. That's why they care, right? He has tied up a lot of resources and endangered others, right? So <laughs> you're slowing commerce when you try to kill yourself. I've talked about this with people before. This is how ridiculous this place is, this hell. Uh, so we're talking about the global elite families and that Rothschild anoints Alexandra uh, the heir as family cements reigns. So Alexander de Rothschild said his uh, father always told him to do what you want. If you want to play tennis, go ahead. So now 32, he uh, did not devote his life to perfecting his serve, breeding horses and other pursuits one might imagine are available to Scion of the world's biggest family-owned bank. It said he took jobs from other financial firms before joining the family business, becoming a seventh generation of banking dynasty that had, can be traced to the 18th century where they got most of their wealth from lying about the stock market between the Napoleon War and Britain. So, yeah, that's how they uh, got in, right? It goes on, it says, this consolidation further shifts the balance of power to Paris. So, you don't have to believe in all this um, uh, alien stuff, but there is a hierarchy of families and stuff like that. And um, right now, the Rothschild family is the, quote, Pindar. They are holding this little... A crown that they pass around and they supposedly give to each other and I'm not sure but I think the Romanovs are supposed to have it next and the Rothschilds don't want to give it up. So this Rothschilds family has been this uh, leader that's holding this Pindar uh, basically for several hundred years. And you see about this Batman, 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 it's like, is this guy a grassroots dude? No, he's a millionaire. This is how much it would cost an average person to be Batman. The total comes to a staggering $682 million. And like a commenter said, you know, this whole shooting took place on what? On a new moon. On a new moon, what, on the 19th or 20th, which was what? A dark night. The dark night rising, which is their what? Their dark night. Their dark order. Their antichrist or whatever you want to call it. So the Olympics is coming up this Friday, and it says here how Olympics hurt host cities more than they help. It says here that private companies, not cities, are the big winners in the bidding process. It says once a city wins the Olympics, frenzy planning begins. And it says, and afterward, leftover stadiums take up needed room and cost tens of millions to maintain, even as they provide little use. So the taxpayers pay for it, and the games cost tens of billions to bring in closer to $5 billion. This is from March 2012. Police invite security firms to bid for roles. It says here that um, private security firms could investigate some crimes and patrol neighborhoods under plans being drawn up for police in England and Wales. They're talking about private firms being involved in patrolling neighborhoods. So they're talking about having these private contractors there permanently. I forgot about that because, you know, this whole thing about the Olympics with the G4S and all that they're not meant to leave so if they do have some kind of false flag or not these guys probably aren't going to leave and they could in fact replace police so yeah servicemen were laid off and now they have to more have to cover for g4s while the bosses at g4s demand the full amount agreed in their contract
airmen from the Air National Guard Tactical Air Control Party participated in a combatives and close quarters battle class during Exercise Northern Strike 2012 at Grayling Air Gunnery Range, Michigan. Part of today's training was we started out with individual skills of how to handle yourself one-on-one -on -one against a combatant, an enemy combatant, or a non-compliant combatant, and worked all the way up through how to clear a room as a team. It was how to fight as a team and understanding that your primary weapon is very dependable, but your secondary weapon is the airman to your left and right. How to work as a team, how to fight as a team, and how to win as a team. I applied it through the CQB portion because I was able to uh, strike at 100%. All those things are absolutely vital in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. They're vital if they get in a situation in an urban environment where 90% of our engagements are fought in the military, but it also instills a thinking process that'll be vital in a combined arms fight or using air support to support you know Army guys like me on the ground. So ultimately, it helps us to help them because they get that attitude of how to you know fight as a team, combine everything. Much the violence of action, uh, whenever you're engaging somebody, uh, whether it's with or without a weapon, um, you need to be persistent and uh, you pretty much need to be as aggressive as possible. You hear that, folks? As, ag as aggressive as possible. That means butt stocking them in the head. Probably some dude that lost his job. That's what they're training for. Marine Corps creates law enforcement battalions. So it says here, editor's note, editor's note, if you think that this is exclusively for deployment abroad, I've got a bridge to sell you. So the Marine Corps has created its first law enforcement battalions, the consolidated units of military police officers trained to investigate a variety of crimes. So it says here, the battalions will be capable of helping control civil disturbances, handling detainees, FEMA camps maybe? carrying out forensic work using biometrics to identify suspects, including traffic laws, so they're going to be writing tickets. But it says here, the Marine Corps plans to show off its new battalion in Miami later this month at the conference. Southern Command expected to be attended by ally countries uh, such as Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize. Remember in Florida, they actually had that uh, huge exercise, uh, black op hill, black helicopters and stuff, uh, where they were rescuing the mayor, right? For, so they're getting ready. The only people that don't know about this are at least a good majority of the American people. They still think help is around the corner. Hope. Change. So it says here, Defense Secretary Panetta, Panetta orders Pentagon to monitor media for information leaks. He's ordered the senior Pentagon officials to begin monitoring major U.S. news media for disclosure of classified information. And reporters must consult with the White House before publishing stories. That's right. It says here, politicians and their advisors are routinely demanding that reporters allow them final editing power over any published uh, quotations. So an individual wins a settlement that requires D.C. cops to abide by new photo guidelines. And it's basically, what, photographing them on the public street. All right, so I'm sure many of you remember this uh, from last October. California Appeals Court approves cell phone searches during traffic stops. Actually, this is from 2011. So, yeah, they officers can rifle through your cell phones during traffic violations stop. Also, now, it's legal. Cops seize cell phones impersonate owners. Court says sending texts uh, using a seized iPhone doesn't violate privacy rights. And there's a device that jams driver's phone signals, alerts police, public, and passengers. So, university takes preventing behind-the-wheel mobile use to a new Orwellian level by making distracted drivers' indiscretions public and automatically ratting them out to police. And a new lab is working on security shoe soles to ID people. The sensors in the bio soles that even monitor your gait or your style of walk. Garage doors victim of strange radio interference that's right, affected by radio frequency sent out by the U.S. Navy. Cute little micro drones, the new face of the cutting edge warfare, kind of like little toys, but no longer a U.S. toy. Drones are going global. That's right, FAA has authorized 106 government entities to fly domestic drones. Now they have drones that can fly indefinitely, being recharged by lasers. While well, the Air Force is to begin testing drone fired lasers over North Dakota.